Today I'm going to talk about streamlined energy and carbon reporting. I'm not going to talk from a lovely studio because we're in the condition of lockdown. So here, like many of you, I'm at my home desk with my setup. Set it up for DSC. Doesn't matter, I'm using some boxes as razors. Everything's at the right height. Streamlined energy and carbon reporting. The first reports are now coming out. What do they actually look like? This is for manufacturer X. And the results here, as you might expect, are for a manufacturing company. As we go down the page here, we can see the applicable legislation is listed there. And this is going into the director's report. This is slightly bolded here just to pull out some of the key features. And you can see here, this refers to the methodology that's been used. It also mentions who's actually assisted the business with the carbon footprint assessment and that is carbon footprint limited and it tells you exactly the metrics that have been used and that those are from DEFRA and Bayes. Importantly here is to make sure the period covered is declared and this is the 1st of April 2019 through to the 31st of March this year. The scope of the calculations are in there, the minimum that you'll need of scopes one and two. For this particular business, they've also covered some Grey Fleet, which is scope three. And that makes sense because there often is a lot of cost, a lot of carbon and a lot of energy use associated with scope three. So it's good to make sure that you have a measure of that. We'll move down there. You can see mention of the 2019 emission factors being used for this assessment. The next page details the results. Perhaps this is the most important section, certainly technically. Here we can see the direct emissions and the indirect emissions before the total is presented. And this is the minimum amount that you can put into this report. Scope 3 is also there. We mentioned that before, giving us a gross total carbon footprint just here. The business has invested in verified carbon standard carbon offsets relating to a project avoiding deforestation in Brazil. This allows the business then to write down net zero emissions. As we go through here, the intensity ratios are presented. These are very important because they allow the business to assess itself and compare itself with its peers in the market. Here are presented the total footprint per employee and per million pound turnover. And finally, the total energy consumption is shown. For those of you who completed an ESOS assessment, Energy Savings Opportunities Scheme, you'll be familiar with this number here presented in kilowatt hours. The footnotes below just explain a little bit about what the scope is and how they've used the offsets. And the final point is to detail energy efficiency measures. For this particular business, they did take part in ESOS and a number of measures were implemented to reduce energy from that. So it's always good to mention within here what you've actually done. That is SECR reporting. If you're still uncertain how to complete your SECR report or you're uncertain whether your business needs to on a legal basis do that, please get in contact with us at Carbon Footprint.